Welcome to the New Trust Economy, where your hosts, Blockchain 101 author and founder of Rise Housing, Monica Profit, and Inc. innovation columnist and brand casting strategist, Tracy Hazard, explore all things blockchain, ICO ventures, and cryptocurrency. Each week, they explore businesses, applications, and venture built on blockchain or cryptocurrency and address issues like women and diversity in tech, trust and distrust, and the economics of access and value. We would like to remind our listeners that investing in disruptive tech, ICOs, and cryptocurrency is speculative in nature and involves substantial risk of loss. We encourage you to invest carefully and do your due diligence first. Now, here's today's host, Monica Profit. Welcome to the New Trust Economy. I'm Monica Profit, and I'm here with Laura Wallendahl, who's the general manager of Thesis, which actually you might start to realize is maybe a little more like being a COO that, without the title. But anyway, welcome, Laura. It's so nice to have you on. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited to be here. Um, I'm excited that you're here. It's kind of weird because you actually could be maybe like if we had known this, you could be sitting on the couch next to me and we could just be like, talking to each other like this or something. It might not, I had it might no not idea. as well. The format might not be as good. I don't know. But um, Yeah, yeah. I had no idea that we were neighbors. <laughs> I had no idea either. Um, let's see if I can make this better. Oh, look, I just changed the view. That's good. Um, so let's see. Thesis is who you work with. Uh, you've been yeah. with them for a while now. And there's some really cool developments that we have to cover because that's usually how people, when they come to me, they're like, we have a new announcement. That's why we have all this PR. And I'll be like, sweet. So you <laughs> fall in that category, which is awesome. But you yeah. also fall in the category of a fellow San Juan resident, which is wonderful because next time when we do a follow up on this and you have your next lunch, then we can like actually have drinks or something like that and make this much more of a fun thing. So um, where do we start? I guess like I want to start with what is thesis to begin with? What is thesis? Sure. Thesis is a venture production studio in crypto. So that makes and so, me what think that, means- that maybe like what venture production is like there's new money and you are producing videos or like a TV show about crypto. Like, what is production studio? Yeah, so- yeah. Uh, yeah. So we're we're a venture studio. It's it's kind of the cross between uh, venture fund and accelerator program and startup people. And so, what we do is we there's a Venn diagram that I'm describing here. And so. So we're, we're right in the middle of that. And, and what we do is um, build and launch projects in the crypto space. Okay. And so everything that, that we, all of the different projects that we have, and, and the first one started in 2014, um, and now we are up to, we're, we're launching our fifth project. Um, everything is started in-house. We, we build everything in-house. We start everything in-house. The ideas come from in-house. So we don't look externally for founders or existing ideas or companies like a, an accelerator program, like a Y Combinator might, um, but instead, Instead, we come up with the ideas ourselves, what we what we want to see exist in the world, and we we build it. That's kind of amazing. So you're not out kind of going, how can we take part of the equity in your company and bring you in and build you up? It's more like, interesting idea. Already been done. We'll do our own. <laughs> Something else. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And you know, and and it's there's there's a couple venture production studios or venture studios out there. Consensus is an example of one. Um, you know, they're they're a really, really big venture studio and and we see a lot of similarities, um, but a lot of differences. So one of the differences is is we're really small. We're really small and high leverage. We've only got about 10 people at the studio and we're not planning on growing that to to many more. And we only launch one to two projects a year. And I would say two projects a year is is a stretch for us because we're so uh, few people. We're we're small and high leverage and really, you know, startup operators at our core. And so we really think about, all right, what is the next project that we want to launch? What do we want to do? Who's the team? How do we get this started? And then everyone at the studio kind of jumps in and is a co-founder of that that startup and then we hire ourselves out spin it up and spin it out oh my gosh that sounds like a very interesting way to work almost like a think tank yes. meets like execution you know so like you get <laughs> to all the way to iteration and it's that sounds incredible actually so if i like scrap what i'm doing 
I want to check out what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like a come on by. We're always looking for like, especially at the studio, like oddly shaped puzzle pieces, like these, these foundry startup types who have deep industry expertise or deep domain expertise, whether it's marketing or biz dev or design or engineering. And then we think about, all right, how do you um, like, work with a team and help them scale? How do you start and get your hands dirty at first and then replace yourself and then do it again and then replace yourself and then do it again. And then also continue to support the projects that we've already launched long-term. And so it's a lot of juggling between projects at very different stages, um, but we always love that like early baby stage, that zero to one. That's like, that sounds like um, being a startup founder on steroids. Like, it is. like the optimum of startup <laughs> foundering. That's what it is. You basically are like, well, we're just going to have eight instead of one. That's just like, Yeah, wow. let's just yeah. keep going. Let's just keep going. Put our hand right back on the burner. <laughs> so Laura, the optimum of startup companies. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. I think that that should, that's what general manager means. <laughs> um, you said that's because you have a really flat organization. I guess you kind of have yeah. to be pretty flat if you're going to get anything done with that much agility and then start in a replicated startup kind of environment, right? Exactly. Exactly. So we we work with and at the at the studio level, we work with really high level folks who are both strategic and incredibly adept operators. You know, somebody who can just jump in and be like, all right, this is what this new company needs. This is how I can get it done. This is zero to one. And now I'm going to hire myself out of that job so I can do zero to one somewhere else. Oh, wow. That's wonderful. That sounds like a ton of fun. So you <laughs> said uh, one of the projects that you launched was Fold, one of the earlier yes. ones, right? Okay. Tell me yeah, about that. That is our earliest project, um, early baby days um, of, of the company. So this is in 2014, before I joined the company. Um, so 2014 Fold was launched. Um, I'm very good friends with the founders of Fold and Thesis and, and, and all of the above. We were um, friends from a previous company accelerator program we went through one together and um they left their startup started fold and they tried to get me to join them actually in 2014. Yeah. um they both like stayed on my couch and they were like leave your startup come join us in fold in this crazy bitcoin startup and i was like no i'm i'm not into I'm not into Bitcoin. This is not my thing. My company is going to the moon. This is what I need to do. I was totally wrong, but <laughs> fold, <laughs> fold. I was totally wrong. I was 100% wrong. I am still kicking myself for not having joined them in 2014. I waited until 2016, but fold is a, is a Bitcoin rewards uh, debit card. It's going to be a credit card soon, but it's a Bitcoin rewards uh, debit card. So um, you can, you know, spend normally and, and instead of like airline points or credit card points, you get Bitcoin. What? And that's way better because my airline points never go up in value at all. <laughs> in fact, exactly. they expire. <laughs> exactly. Well, and um, the mission behind thesis and everything that we build and everything that that we um, kind of back and support long term is um, really the freedom for individuals. Um, freedom and autonomy for individuals. So really looking at, all right, airline points, it's not really empowering an individual. It's empowering you to spend your airline points with your airline. Credit card points, you can spend these points at these specific places and vendors. Uh, Bitcoin, you can do whatever you want with it. Take it out, move it to cash, keep it in Bitcoin, earn interest on it. Um, whatever you want to do, it's it's yours. And it's also this really nice on-ramp into crypto and in, in a fun way. Um, so there's a lot of games and gamification for Fold. So Fold um, has a daily spin wheel and a spend spin wheel where you can earn more Bitcoin on your purchases, not just your regular, you know, certain percent. Um, and so that creates some really interesting spending habits and like really a lot of interesting daily active use and, and that sort of thing. And then they also just launched the beta version of their metaverse on the, the Fold app. So you can, uh, with an AR kind of interface on your app, um, earn sats by like, 
finding them around the room and doing this like really fun. Well, is it, so it, is like, it like Pokemon Go of credit cards apping? <laughs> yes, it is exactly that. They they partnered with Niantic, who launched Pokemon Go to yeah. launch this portion of their app. So it's That's it's incredible. Cool. That's really I wonderful. used it three times today. It is really, really fun. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, that was the very first project um, that was launched. I want to know more about Niantic and all of those things, but I don't want to get off topic. This, this, okay. We're going to have to do a, a version two of this. Like a, we're going to have okay. to do a, a series. We're going to have a series. It's going to be a whole series about all the different projects. Yeah, both women in blockchain talking to each other. <laughs> Yes. All, <laughs> all of it's the only time you'll see this many in one place. <laughs> We're almost like a snuffle up against. Like if you see one, you'll never see another. There's just like one at a time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, you're saying though, like a lot of the the thesis behind thesis mm -hmm. is the, the accessibility and like almost um, uh, the need to always be like thinking through getting more people into crypto, but also increasing diversity in crypto. Is that is that also that kind of ties in a bit, right? Absolutely. So when um, when we think about what we're going to launch next and and we've got, you know, a couple oh gosh, we're on our fifth project now, um, which is launching in December. Um, very, very exciting. We'll talk more we'll about that. that. Um, but we, we think a lot about, all right, who is this serving and how do we help, you know, serve the, the early crypto audience, um, but also expand that extend that there's a lot of tribalism in crypto one of our one of our projects um, that we launched in 2020 was keep it's a privacy protocol for ethereum and uh, we built on top of keep uh, tbtc a way to bridge bitcoin from the bitcoin blockchain to ethereum and do it in a totally decentralized way. Um, so not like a WBTC where there's like an LLC oh, somewhere in Canada, yeah. um, not like some of the other competitors that aren't totally decentralized. This is like a truly decentralized way to move your Bitcoin from one chain to another. And we thought a lot about, all right, we've got a couple different audiences here. One is our Bitcoiner audience. Um, Bitcoiners and the the Ethereum audience as well, and then thinking about you know this multi chain kind of world, and we wanted to build it so that we could move it to lots of different chains as well, and really unlock the liquidity of Bitcoin. Yeah. But one of the things that you need to to do and think about when you're building these things is how do you attract those long standing Bitcoin holders and those Bitcoiners to this new world of lots of different chains and lots of different coins. And, and there's definitely um, strong sentiments on, on either side. And we really wanted to build it in a way that, that captured this ethos of, of the Bitcoin kind of building, like really decentralized, no like control, no keys um, in, into the back end of it so that you could kind of access no multi-sig wallet where we could kind of have your keys, really thinking about that, not your keys, not your coin concept. And so there's, there's one way that we look at it. And then the other way is as, as we're kind of building these different projects, we need to expand our user base beyond that early kind of tribalistic um, a group of people who are going to be our first adopters. Like they need to use it. They need to love it. But then we need to extend beyond that. And how do we do that? The user experience of crypto sucks. Okay. It sucks okay. hard. Yeah. It's confusing. You yeah, have to be your own. It's almost bank. like, are you trying to keep me from doing it? Because you're making it really hard to do it. Like. I can't believe that I mean, even sometimes I'll run into a certain protocol or an app or a, a, a trade I want to make. And I'm like, you're, I'm not, a, this isn't new to me. Cause, and I still can't do it. You must really not want to take my money. Come on. you know? Right. Right. It makes it very, it makes it really, really, really intimidating. And it creates this, you know, barrier to entry, this big yeah. moat um, where if you've been in it forever and you feel really confident using these tools and this language and the lingo and all of this stuff, um, you're free to enter, but not anybody else. And right. so really thinking about, um, you know, democratizing finance, and we throw that term around a lot. 
Uh, we throw around empowering the individual, democratizing finance, um, how how you have freedom of your your data, your choice, your information, all of this stuff. But the user experience of that does not lend to really expanding that user base very well. It's intimidating. Absolutely. And so, I mean, I'm just so glad you guys are really making that something on the forefront of what you're trying to address with all of your inventions and all of your innovations, because <laughs> I've been like beating the drum of, you know, user interface experience and user experience in general for years now, because if you can't, if you, I mean, the first person to make crypto as easy as Apple made the phone is going to own crypto. They're going to just, they're going to clean right. it, you know, like they right. were the thing because if you can't do that, you really, you, you're losing everybody. I mean, the minute that somebody doesn't need a user's manual or any instructions to get something going, it's going to be incredible. It will be on right. And until and then, I it's think like, that okay, yeah. you learn about your, you know, you have to have <laughs> your long and cryptographic address and yours, your, you know, and it's like, is that your private key or is that your public key? We don't even know. Is that a seed phrase? Can you make up a seed phrase? Is it like a password? Nah, it's like, yeah. Where can I store it? Can I store it on my computer? I shouldn't store it on my computer. Oh my gosh. Can I store it on my phone? I shouldn't store it on my phone. Oh, oh my gosh. Know. I have to store it. No, I have to write it down on a piece of paper and then put it somewhere. Uh, what I, if it's a piece I put of paper, it on the whole thing because I still seem to have the thing. What do I do? How can I? get it ever again exactly oh my computer again. crashed exactly you get all of these like you know and i i wear my tinfoil hat proudly um you know just like get my security down understand the landscape know where i'm gonna be because if you you know with great freedom comes great responsibility like <laughs> now you're your own bank congratulations oh <laughs> um well, like you can't it... call anyone for support <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly exactly and so like those those are problems that we we look to solve with um, design and, and user experience and thinking through this stuff. But, you know, I think we're still early days with that. Like, you know, I, I can't promise that all of our next, you know, projects that we launch are going to be the most um, welcoming and totally understood by the widest audience. But that's kind of where we're inching towards and where we need to continue to like push that boulder up that hill. Yeah, absolutely. Well, speaking of pushing the boulder up the hill, can you talk a little bit about Tally? Yes, Tally is our newest project at, at Thesis. So um, it is a community owned and operated Web3 wallet. Okay, so and wait, wait, wait. It's a community owned and operated wallet. Web3. We can leave that part out because that's like just confusing. We all know. It's okay, good. yeah. I mean, the rest of us, some of us know, but like, let's not, let's yeah. just. So it's a it's a wallet that's operated by everyone. Does that mean that your money is pooled or does that mean that it's kept separate and there's something else about the community aspect? Yeah, so there's something else about the community aspect. It's it's really just like a browser extension wallet, um, similar to a bunch of others out there in in the space. It's like Netflix, uh, but it's owned by everyone. Right. So um, the, the big differences here between um, what exists today and what we're building is um, we are totally open source. Um, we are going to um, have a DAO that, that makes decisions on, on the, the future of the protocol. Okay. Uh, the future now, of the application. And now we, all, we know like the DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization. So it means that if you are a member of this community, if you have downloaded it, if you have put your money into it, you now have voting rights to help guide it. 100%. You okay. got it. That's like, Yeah. That? I, exactly. And so um, basically we're saying there's a lot of problems. There's a lot of issues and problems that these these Web3 wallets face, these, these browser extensions wallets face. And we don't want to solve them alone. We wanna solve them with the users. Um, and and say, all right, well, you know, you're you're looking at the the future of a crypto and and governance and decision making, and it really flips the, the user and the company itself on its head quite a bit. Um, so imagine like you can, you can have a vote to say like what features need to be built next? What do we need to focus on? What is most important for you as a user of this wallet to see? 
um, in terms of features or security or chains? What chain do you want it to be on next? How do you want it to function? Like, what, what do you want us to focus on? And so we're launching a, a beta of this app, um, like early community version where um, you can download it from, from the Chrome store. Um, we're launching it later this month. And then, I know, it's really exciting. <laughs> and then really participate in the community. We've got over 6,000, probably more than that, members on our Discord. And we have community calls every week. And it's just mind blowing how many people show up to our community calls, participate, have great conversations. And, and we're really saying, all right, this isn't our wallet that we're deciding what happens next. This isn't our wallet where we're deciding how to um, build this roadmap and, and structure these next, next things or figure out every single integration. This is the community's roadmap to make those decisions. Um, and we're, we're developing it and um, giving it to the community. That's amazing. That's amazing. So is there going to be a coin associated with this wallet or is it going to like, how does that get worked out? Can you tell? Talk yeah. About so, that? so with, with the, the, the wallet um, and, and the DAO and, and the voting and the governance, um, all of that stuff will, will come together. Okay. So is there, a, what's the coin going to be? Do you know what it is or is it not out yet? Um, so there, there is not, um, anything out. Um, so it's, it's really just thinking about, um, really building this community and building delegates yeah. and, and really thinking about how we can like, um, gain a lot of, a lot of traction within our community and a lot of like protocol politicians and really thinking about people who are using lots of different protocols and, and participating in that governance. And then we also want to make it very easy within the wallet to, um, participate in governance. Like if you're holding a token in your wallet that there's a vote coming up, we're thinking a lot about like, how do you get notified of that vote? Right. How do you get notified that you're you're holding a token that gives you the ability to make a decision on behalf of one of these these protocols? And are you going to be able to track the level of engagement from your users in terms of like this is our voter turnout? You know, like I mean, wouldn't it be amazing if you could um, have a you know a, a, an innovation that has a better voter turnout than a country, and then see how that oh my can form an upgrade on the country? You know. Right, right. Well, and I think that's one of those ideas that we want to hear about, like how, what, what info, what tracking, what all of this stuff. And we as, um, you know, thesis who's building this um, and, and launching it, like we're not going to own and track that. Um, so it's a little bit more of like, what, what will the what DAO want to know about themselves even like what, what does the community even take interest in or whatever? Right. Right. And how do you how do you build that momentum as well is like, all right, how do you build that momentum towards what people want to know, what people want to share? Because um, privacy is really, really important. And now you're sharing that with a DAO, not a company. You know, we're, we're not going to be collecting that info like we're building this stuff and Letting putting it out there and saying it's it's yours. That's you know, awesome. we'll continue to build on it. We'll continue to be the team behind it. Um, but we're not really going to own it like a like a centralized company owns some of these things. And I think that's the biggest difference with, with all of the other projects that are out there today um, that are that are wallets like this, um, that there's a centralized company behind it that's kind of owning all of these decisions and owning all of this stuff. Um, but but you know, they're making the decisions and it's their bottom line that they're most worried about. And we're saying, if you're a user of this wallet, you should get paid right? to use the product. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited to see what you might think of these, uh, the two um, articles that I've written on an economic model that helps to codify how profits and, and, and you know, the revenues of any company can be redistributed in a very like, um, just in a very automated standard way so that, you know, as you yeah. reach, as you reach the level of what it costs to run the organization, you basically take the profits and just redistribute it to everybody who's participated. 
And so if there's a cost, that's exactly the cost. But outside of that, it's not just like, yay, the coffers of a few take it all because capitalism seems to break at scale. It works great up to a point. But when someone takes all of the money, it, it, it stops benefiting any, even the person. Like there's no way that that person could even actually benefit from what they've, they've amassed. And mm -hmm. they'll never get through it and they'll never be able to contribute to the world. And that, like, it'll never actually, it, it's, all, it's just all, it's like a coagulated clot in a, in a, in a, you know, a body that needs 100%. better circulation. So being able to codify how and at what point we start to redistribute on purpose, not through a taxation mm -hmm. system, not through a, a charity, but if there's an engagement level there, then if you've engaged it, you, you become, you'd completely make it a circle between the creator and the consumer. So they're no longer par they're no longer working right. in silos. They're the same. That is exactly it. That's exactly how we think about tally and exactly well, how. My, Look at this. Model and can, like, <laughs> I can get you just the, the simple log logarithmic spreadsheet so you can figure out exactly at what point you just start redistributing. You're going to, I mean, you're going to go like wildfire because ultimately if every, if the economic model like that was implemented, every single price would be driven down to its cost, making it right. the most competitive market one on the market. If there's any price whatsoever, Everybody else is going to have to jump on board and keep lowering their prices just to continue to compete. If I had Monica's Amazon Prime and I said, I'm not going to do Amazon Prime unless you know, our costs are $100 million a year. And everybody pays their Amazon Prime. And after I reach my $100 million a year, it all comes back and it starts coming back into your wallet because the more people that pay, it more just redistributes until suddenly it's not 100 it's 90 and it's 80 and it's 70 and it's 60 Well, then Amazon's going to have to change their Prime pricing because I can do it for less because I gave up the profits and I gave it back to the users. So if you implement that consistently, you can end up being the most competitive price on the market based only and solely by the, the community engagement. And with 6,000 people, you're off to a great start. So I so. love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The community engagement has just been wild. And our, our, last, our last community call had over 600 people who joined, which I mean, for, for community calls, it's, that's enormous. Um, enormous. Our first one, we had over a hundred people join and we were like, we didn't do, we didn't pay for marketing. We didn't do any of this stuff. We just, we just kind of, we, we put out a, a, a blog post about, um, our ethos, um, what we believe. And, and that's what really started to drive this and bring people in and, and get people excited because they're like, no, I believe this too. Oh, speaking of bringing people in, you mentioned to me before we started this that you guys are hiring it. So you're going from 10 to like, apparently enormously more. You're looking to hire tons <laughs> of people. What are you, who are you hiring for? What are you hiring for? Let's know. What yeah, do you need? So, so at the studio, we are planning on staying pretty small. Um, so the studio itself, the, the projects that, that we launch are a different story. Uh, but the studio itself, we look for kind of like oddly shaped founder type puzzle pieces. Um, so <laughs> looking for people with deep industry expertise or domain expertise rather. So really amazing marketers, really amazing design, really amazing at biz dev and like a strange, like startup founder kind of yeah. ethos. And so thinking um, at the studio where we want to expand, we're, we're not going to grow super, super huge. We're looking for a couple key roles and positions really. Um, and, uh, you know, one in kind of marketing and others in um, like security research. Um, but it's also kind of looking for uh, you know, folks who don't necessarily fit just one of those categories. And I'm, I'm an example of that. I'm a startup founder. I did growth for a while. I do operations. I'm a COO type. I help start and, and fund these different companies. Think about our funding models. I do a lot of DeFi stuff. I'm a very oddly shaped puzzle piece. So we're, we're looking for folks like that who kind of want to push the boundaries of their creative um, edges and, and also look at our projects. So our our projects are, are really growing fast. So we, what we do is at the studio, we swarm around a new idea and we're all kind of like founders, co-founders of this new idea. And then we spin it up and then we replace ourselves. 
with the the team that's gonna gonna take it to the next level to launch it to build it so we've got open positions at fold at keep and tbgc at saddle um, at tally so we're looking to hire really really um, talented people and we're looking adjacent to the crypto space the crypto space is really small yeah. and if we just keep hiring each other we're not going to grow or learn <laughs> or like change our mindset at all um I and the so same party every Every week and expect to meet a new person. You exactly. We have to go to different parties. So we're like, all right, what's adjacent to this this crypto space and um, find these like crypto curious people and bring them in and say like, all right, we're launching something cool. We're not going to teach you how to do your job, but we're going to ramp you up on crypto. Yeah. And so that's, that's what cool. we really look for. That is really cool. Um, Wow. So I'm glad, actually, I think that's a really great place to end because we can definitely include some links to all of the, um, all the companies that you mentioned. So people can check out the, the websites themselves, see what you've got, see where your careers are, what you're hiring for, what kind of career opportunities are there. And um, yeah, absolutely. And if you, and if you end up with a job at one of these companies, please say that you found out from the new trust economy, because yeah. that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Come join us. <laughs> yeah, for sure. This sounds really cool. I mean, I have, I have interviewed a lot of people that are focused on their one project or their few projects, or may, sometimes they're those crazy Steve Jobs types that are like, well, I do this and I do that. And I'm like, are you asking for pancreatic cancer? Yet? What are you doing? But like you actually, it seems like you found a sustainable way of having your fingers in multiple different bowls, which is really cool. I'm just, I love this. I'm like, why did I think of that? That's a great model. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're still working out the kinks. There's a lot of stuff that we're learning and, and trying to do and trying to do well. So there's there's a bunch of opportunity. Well, awesome. I think, you know, people have got plenty of rabbit holes to fall and like run down into and find out what you're, what you guys are up to. Thesis.com, correct? Thesis.co. .co, aha, aha, yeah. thesis.co. Um, I put the M on myself, sorry about that. But. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, this has been awesome. It's been great to learn not only about thesis, but all the projects you guys are doing and all the way you fit these weird puzzle pieces together, which sounds like it could be an HR nightmare. It could also be an HR dream. It's like depending. It's a dream. It's actually a dream. I really love everybody that we work with. We're oh, very, very, awesome. very lucky. That is yeah. really wonderful. You don't always hear that from people. They're, not, they're usually like, let me tell you how much I like my team. They're like, let me tell you how much I like the company. <laughs> <laughs> no, the team is like number one in my book. And then like, yeah, the company and the projects that we do are also pretty cool and amazing, but it's mostly like the team that I get to do this with. That's like oh, the best awesome. part. <laughs> that is great. Well, I just really appreciate you coming on and telling us about this stuff. Um, Laura Wallendahl, I know that you're the only one on the internet. So if you I'm find one of them, you know it's only her. <laughs> it's me. It's me. That's just it. <laughs> yeah, this has been a real pleasure. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, I think if you have anything else you want to add, I don't know. I think we covered everything. No, you're I think we hiring, covered. You're growing. A you're lot happy. Of you're in San Juan. We need to hang out. <laughs> like I think that's everything. We hit all the high marks, right? It is. It is. We, we've covered a, a ton. Um, definitely want to do this again. This has been amazing. And um, yeah, loving this. Really, awesome. really excited about all the things. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Again, that was here with Laura Wallendahl, the general manager of Thesis, also known as kind of the COO, but in a flat way and um, flat org way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I guess uh, this is Monica Provitt signing off from the New Trust Economy, and we will catch you on the next episode. Thank you so much for listening. You've been listening to The New Trust Economy. We'd love to hear your comments on today's show, as well as suggestions for future topics and guests. Visit us online at newtrusteconomy.com or on social at newtrusteconomy. Thanks for exploring The New Trust Economy with us.